Hai Assalamualaikum and good day everyone So for this video kita akan masuk the last chapter of your matriculation syllabus which is polymers So here are the learning outcome So at the end of this lesson you should be able to explain all these terms Monomer, polymer, homopolymer, copolymer, striction polymer and crosslink polymer and give example of natural polymer and then explain the preparation of synthetic polymers through condensation and addition polymerization and uh, write the use of synthetic polymers ok so first kita tengok dia punya istilah monomer apa polymer apa so monomer is actually the basic molecular unit ok ataupun dia adalah small repeating unit that build up polymer ok so monomer 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 dia akan hasilkan polymer rantaian polymer so proses untuk convertkan monomer menjadi polymer ok mono means satu poly means ada banyak lah so this process is called as polymerization It is the process that combine monomers, beberapa monomers to form polymer. So, polymer ni apa pula? So, polymer is a macromolecule ataupun large molecule that made up of many repeating unit ataupun made up of monomers. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at this. So, daripada monomer undergo polymerization kamu boleh form polymer ok so dekat sini ada ber, beberapa benda yang kamu kena take note so contoh monomer is this basic compound ok so basic unit etin contoh so if you undergo polymerization you akan form this polymer so ini adalah polyethylene ok So, polymer instead of kamu tulis rantai panjang begini. Okay, sebab terlalu banyak untuk kamu tulis poly kan. We we don't know how many times it repeats. Okay, sebab tu kita letak n times. So, it repeat n times. So, n ni boleh jadi 100, 1000 ataupun 10,000 and so on lah. Okay, so you can write in simple form which is this way. Okay, so kita hanya ambil sebahagian daripada your structure tu and kita gariskan means ada lagi sambungan dia dekat sini CH2, CH2 CH2, CH2 CH2, CH2 ok tapi kita hanya ambil sebahagian sahaja and buatkan bracket ok garis panjang buat bracket and kalau untuk polymer jangan lupa tulis N N kecil di bahagian kanan bawah sini so this is to indicate it repeat n times berapa kali n times ok so the repeating unit tu is this one ok without n ni ok apa yang berulang-ulang tu adalah the repeating units which is this one lah so kalau soalan tanya write the monomer for from this polymer Okay, so write the monomer structure monomer yang kamu kena tulis is this one so kalau soalan minta give the repeating unit from the given polymer so repeating unit ini kamu tulis garis okay, tutup bracket and CH2 ok so ini adalah the repeating unit tanpa ini without N dekat sini tak perlu so that is repeating unit kalau dia minta polymer ok from the given monomer write the structure of the polymer that can be formed contoh so macam mana nak tulis you tak perlulah tulis panjang-panjang macam ni kita tulis in this form so tulis the small uh, tulis the repeating unit and tulis N dekat bahagian kanan ni Right, so untuk polimer kita akan tengok structure, dia ada straight chain ataupun linear and cross link 
properties untuk polimer kita ada homopolimer and copolimer type of polymer kita ada natural and synthetic polymer so untuk straight chain polymer as the name itself it consists of monomer that are linked in straight chain so satu monomer dua tiga empat lima enam and so on lah okay it is linked all of them are linked in straight chain so you have one straight chain two straight chain three and so on lah so itu adalah straight chain polymer so straight chain polymer ni since dia adalah in linear form begini it is very soft and when you give heat it can be reformed lah dia boleh break and this is recyclable sifat dia boleh di recycle right so if you have cross link polymer so cross link polymer is basically if you have linear polymer dua linear polymer it is connected by branch so the characteristic it is harder compared to straight chain polymer because of the branch here so make it more rigid and it is more elastic lah untuk cross link polymer ini right so kita tengok properties so ada homo polymer homo means sama jenis same type and kalau co polymer pula it is different type lah so kalau homo polymer monomer dia mesti yang sama jenis so kalau monomer dia etin so semua etin 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 Okay, A monomer A combine with another monomer A and it repeats. So, kalau co-polymer pula, it is combination. So, ingat perkataan co, it come from combination. So, it can be combination of two or more, dua ataupun lebih monomer. So, syllabus kamu, kamu just tengok dua monomer lah. So, it can be monomer A combined with monomer B and then it repeats A, B, A, B, A, B and so on lah. Okay. So, let's have a look at the types of polymer. So, kamu ada natural polymer. It can be found naturally contoh protein. Okay, dalam kamu punya makanan, contoh dalam kamu punya badan, carbohydrates and natural rubber, getah. Okay, untuk synthetic polymer, it is prepared chemically through industry and dia melalui addition polymerization ataupun condensation polymerization. So, addition polymerization biasanya dia melibatkan alkin. Okay, so you akan produce polyalkin contoh polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, this is your PVC pipe to and polystyrene ini yang dalam bekas makanan tu and teflon this is coating untuk frying pan ok non stick frying pan lah ok next kita ada condensation polymerization ok so kalau ditanya proses macam mana hasilkan that poly polymer so you must state this full name condensation polymerization ok so for this type of polymerization okay it can produce polyamide so polyamide adalah beberapa amide lah so amide we already learn C double bond O bonded to nitrogen okay so you have this amide repeat okay beberapa kali so kita panggil dia sebagai polyamide so contoh dia adalah kevlar So, Kevlar ni adalah bahan untuk bulletproof vest and nylon 6 and also nylon 6-6. Okay, dua ni berbeza dia punya structure. Both ni adalah kegunaan dia untuk textile mainly. And next, kita ada polyester. So, untuk polyester, we have example here, Dacron ataupun Terilin. Now let's have a look at natural polymer. Contoh kat sini kita ada protein. So monomernya adalah amino acid. So ini adalah dia punya polymer of protein. So kalau dia minta monomer, you just write. So ini adalah dia punya monomer. 
amino acid. Okay, kita ada carbohydrates. So the monomer here is glucose. So untuk carbohydrate kamu ada alpha 14 glycosidic linkage. So ini kamu belajar dalam biology. Okay, so now kita tengok natural rubber pula. So we have polyisoprene. So ini adalah structure of polyisoprene. Okay, so the monomer is this one isoprene. Ini monomernya. Ataupun the IUPAC name is 2 methyl 1234 methyl 13 buta diin. Okey, so diin sebab ada dua alkin C double bond C lah. So natural rubber sifat dia adalah soft, sticky and perishable. So this characteristic make it less useful. So sebab tu Natural rubber biasanya akan diolah sebelum diguna pakai secara meluas dalam industri. Now kita nak tengok addition polymerization. So apa tu addition polymerization? It is the addition reaction which monomers with double bond. So biasanya melibatkan monomers with double bond lah untuk addition polymerization that are joined together by a covalent bond to form a large molecule which is the polymer without loss of smaller molecule. So, kalau addition polymerization, ingat dia melibatkan alkin. See what will happen? Carbon-carbon double bond will be broken and you will form carbon-carbon single bond. Okay, so, this enable the chain formation to form polymer. Right, so now kita tengok how to form polyethylene through the addition polymerization. So you have here, okay, so kalau kamu tengok dekat sini, this is the monomer dalam keadaan C double bond C kan? And this bracket is actually to indicate it repeat n times. So macam macam kamu buat maths n darab x Uh, so, ini N times this etin, you akan repeat, kamu akan dapat the polymer repeat N times. Okay, so uh, with the presence of peroxide, so peroxide ni function dia adalah sebagai initiator. Dia yang akan initiate the addition polymerization. Okay, so take note this. Right, so macam mana nak tulis dia punya? Polymer. Okay, so here, apa yang akan jadi? So you have one etin here. So sini adalah sigma bond ini pi bond. So pi bond ni ada dua elektron kan? So satu elektron kita akan buat bond dengan another etin. Okay, so dia akan buat bond dengan another etin. And one elektron here akan bagi dekat luar to form bond with another etin. Okay. So, okay, so basically you have this etin. So, bila you want to form polymer, so mesti combination of etin, etin, etin. Okay. So, monomer combined with another monomers. So, you akan form polymer. So, macam mana kita nak buat this addition polymerization? So, one electron will be given keluar. Okay. So, dia akan buat new bond dengan this carbon ok so from your etin yang warna biru ni ok dia akan bagi satu juga elektron to form this bond yang baru ok so basically kamu akan dapat ok so misalkan padam this part So, there you go. New bond. Bond baru. Consists of two electron. Satu daripada sini tadi. Daripada this etin yang pertama. And another one is from etin yang di sebelah kiri ni. So, dua electron. You akan form bond baru. Okay. So, bahagian kanan ni pula. So, tadi kita ada lagi satu electron. Bagi dekat luar. So, dia akan stay here. 
So this electron daripada alkin yang warna purple ni on the right hand side bagi ke tengah. So you have two electron. So two electron you can use it to form new bond. Bond baru between carbon-carbon. Okay. So itu adalah formation of this polymer. Addition polymerization. Daripada you have carbon-carbon double bond. It breaks and dia buat bond baru. Okay. So, sebab tu bila kita nak tulis polymer kita and then buat bracket and tulis dia sebalik dia structure and then buat bracket garis tu make sure dia keluar and buat bracket and tulis small n here to repeat to indicate it repeat n times. Right. So, the same goes untuk this PVC. So, you have vinyl chloride, another vinyl chloride, another vinyl chloride. So, apa yang akan jadi? Two electron here. Satu bagi kat luar. Satu lagi bagi kat luar. So, basically kamu akan dapat C single bond. Carbon-carbon double bond. Jadi, carbon-carbon single bond. So, yang lain-lain tulis je. Okay, so this is from your vinyl chloride ataupun chloroethane. Okay, so kalau nak tulis dia punya polimer, garis panjang di bahagian tepi, buat bracket, tulis N. Okay, so ini adalah addition polymerization to form PVC polyvinyl chloride. Right, so this example to form polystyrene. Okay, so this is the structure of tyrene ataupun phenylethane. So, with the presence of peroxide, kamu akan form this polystyrene. Okay, so just buka double bond and tulis balik this structure exactly the same with carbon-carbon single bond. And then bond dekat bahagian kiri kanan tu tarik keluar, tutup bracket N. Right, so this is structure of Teflon. So, ini adalah monomer tetrafluoroethene. Okay, so you have carbon-carbon double bond. Dia akan jadi carbon-carbon single bond. So, keluarkan the electron. So, kamu akan dapat this polymer. Jangan lupa tulis bracket and tulis N kecil di bahagian tepi. Okay. So, Next, kita akan tengok condensation polymerization. So, condensation ni dia melibatkan chemical process between two monomers that react together to form a large molecule which is the polymer. And, kalau condensation ingat dia akan eliminate a smaller molecule contoh H2O, HCl. Okay, so kita akan tengoklah ada example. Condensation polymers call it as polyamide okay so polyamide are polymers that are joined by amide bond okay sometimes dia boleh jadi peptide bond but most of the time dia adalah amide bond lah okay so kalau peptide dia mesti yang melibatkan amino acid sesama amino acid sahaja okay so kalau dia bukan both monomer amino acid kita panggil dia sebagai amide bond saja. Right, so the monomers must have at least two functional group to act at the hujung, reactive end, di bahagian hujung. So, let's have a look at this example, how to form nylon 66. Okay, so nylon 66, it come from the name sebab bahagian monomer pertama ada enam carbon, so monomer kedua pun ada enam carbon. Okay, so your structure, since dia adalah condensation polymerization, so this part of your compound, okay, so you can see here, dekat bahagian COOH ni, okay, so this is your carboxylic acid, dioic acid, COOH, COOH, okay, so you akan eliminate plus H2O you akan remove water molecule so nak macam mana nak dapat water molecule ni 
OH daripada carboxylic acid and hydrogen satu daripada disamine, diamine. Okay, so kamu akan remove water molecule plus H2O. Okay, so later you akan form bond between carbon directly bond to this nitrogen. So, ini adalah amide. So, bond ini namanya adalah amide bond. Okay, so macam mana nak tulis? This part bahagian tengah, dia akan remove water kan? So, what happen to at this end? Okay, so this part pun ada OH. So, dia akan combine with another amine. Okay, so another hexa 1,6 amine. So, let's say you have structure in H2. Okay. So, this part dia akan remove water molecule. So, dia akan form bond. Okay. So, water molecule remove. You akan form bond between carbon and nitrogen. So, ini adalah the amide bond. And bahagian kanan ni pun, you akan form amide bond juga dengan another dioic acid. So, you ada C double bond O. OH. So let's say ni rantai carbon dia. And you akan form remain. Satu hydrogen remove water molecule. You akan form bond between nitrogen and carbon. Okay. So sebab tu bila kita nak tulis dia punya polymer. Kita dah remove this OH. So tulis terus this bond. This, this part of amine. Nitrogen. Hydrogen. Okay. So bahagian nitrogen. Okay, so here, dekat bahagian tengah dulu kita fokus. So, you already form this new bond, okay, between carbon dengan nitrogen, right? So, and dekat bahagian kiri, okay, this one, since kita dah form bond tadi, kita remove H2O, kita form bond baru, carbon dengan another amine. So, dekat bahagian luar ni, kita just buat garisan panjang and bracket. Okay, that means ada lagi sambungan with another monomer. Okay, so bahagian kanan ni pula since tadi kita dah buat, kita buat, kita remove water molecule. Okay, we remove water molecule and you akan form bond baru, this amide bond. So, kamu just draw this line, tutup bracket and jangan lupa tulis N. Okay, so this is your polymer of nylon 66. Kamu tulis N times of H2O. So maksudnya, you removing water molecule sebanyak N times. Ni monomer A, monomer B. So ini adalah sejenis copolymer. Okay. Different polymer combined together. So, kalau nylon 66 ni pula, ini adalah homo polymer. Okay, so no acid. And this end, kamu ada NH2. Hujung ni, kamu ada C double bond O, OH. Okay. Okay, so this end, okay, dia akan buat bond with another C double bond O. OH dari akan remove water molecule so you akan form new bond between carbon dengan nitrogen dekat bahagian kiri ni. So dekat bahagian kanan ni pula COH ni dia akan buat bond with NH2 side yang ada amino group from your amino hexin sorry amino hexadioic acid. Okay so you akan remove water molecule here you akan form carbon dengan nitrogen bond this amide bond ok, so it is between the same monomer so sebab tu kita panggil dia homopolymer, ok, so masih lagi condensation polymerization you remove water molecule this is the polymer, ok, so kamu ada bahagian hujung ni amino group tadi akan jadi NH so ini bond dengan another monomer, so Di bahagian kanan ni ada C double bond O. And this one dia akan bond with another monomer. So you just write the cross section. Okay so dekat bahagian tengah ni since they repeating berulang-ulang. 
CH2 So ini ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 So sebab tu you can write in this form Right, so next kita tengok formation of Kevlar Di sini, it is from 1,4 diamino benzene So you have amino group at each end So ini tak, tak ada masalah You can remove H from this side Okay, so from this side, kamu boleh Right, so you can remove hydrogen daripada amin ni, diamino benzene. Okay, so this one dia akan buat bond dengan this terephthalic acid Ok, so since dia ada Cl dekat sini So remember, condensation is not about H2O Remove H2O saja. Dia boleh remove small molecule such as HCl juga So untuk Kevlar to be specific You are removing plus HCl Tengah ni And you akan form new bond between nitrogen and this carbon Di sini kamu akan just remove this hydrogen and you akan buat bond baru with C double bond O of this terephthalic acid ok so dekat bahagian sini pula you akan remove this Cl and also dia akan buat bond with amine so this amino benzene tu lah NH so this is the polymer Kevlar so, untuk this structure, dichron ok, so kita take note lah dekat sini, we remove methanol ok, just now tadi kita remove HCl ok, so untuk formation of dichron so you have 1, 2 ethane diol ok, so ini adalah alcohol react with dimethyl terephthalate ok so bahagian alcohol ok so ingat kalau C double bond O bond to anything so kita akan remove kita akan potong dekat bond sini so OH and this CH3O kamu akan form this methanol and the rest of it kamu akan form polymer and this is the polymer lah Okay, so oxygen akan directly bond to this carbon and tulis je balik your structure ni. Okay, so now kita tengok terylene. So untuk form terylene, you mesti ada benzene 1,4 dicarboxylic acid and also ethane 1,2 diol. So ini carboxylic acid. Okay, so remember kalau C double bond O, as I mentioned before, kamu akan potong dekat bond sini tapi. Okay. So, from your alcohol, kamu akan potong dekat sini lah. So, you akan remove water molecule. So, sini akan jadi plus NH2O. So, this carbon, carbonyl carbon akan directly bond to this oxygen. So, nanti kamu akan dapat. So, ini adalah the structure of your polymer. And jangan lupa tulis N kecil bahagian tepi. So, you akan release side product dia adalah water molecule. So, type of polymer, polyethylene kita guna dalam drinking bottles. So, PVC kita buat dalam pipe ataupun wire covering. Okay, polystyrene banyak guna dalam toys, food container. Teflon ini digunakan dalam non-stick pan. And nylon 6 dalam pembuatan tekstil. And nylon 66 biasanya dalam pembuatan tekstil and also sweater and Kevlar untuk kegunaan form to form this bulletproof vest material dia and dichron ataupun terylene biasanya dalam fabric ataupun fiber optic material. Okay, so that's all untuk polymer.